I've done it a couple of times, like before we got here, but it was so much like little legal little type things that was going on with that. So it was just like, oh, I'm going to get it. It was just a matter of time and how I was going to get it. So. She, jumped, she jumped 194 and 195 in the weeks leading up to this, but USATF being as strict as they are on some of the rules and how they accept those marks, they, they were very nitpicky, which is understandable and which is average. Uh, they're not going to let anybody into the competition. So the 94 and the 95, they were in all comer meets at Rice University. Uh, they were legitimate marks. It's just the first time we had three competitors instead of five. And then the second time, the meet wasn't sanctioned. So there were little issues that we had with that. She's jumped the standard twice this year in the leading weeks. We knew it was there. Was there you couldn't get into other meets? Um, it was a deal where we chose not to travel. They were in Houston. They were in, so basically I go, I drive to go pick her up, bring her back to the track, and just staying away from the travel leading up to, to the championships, sleep in her own bed every single night. Um, that's that's the way that we looked at it. The all-comer meets are sanctioned, but the one, the one on the 23rd, they had some issues with the sanction, and that was kind of the deal. So it was a little bit heartbreaking because that was just literally last week. And, um, you know, it was a deal of, well, I guess we're going into the championship without the standard. We just have to go do it. Mm -hmm. How and, long have you been coaching? Uh, three years. Okay. Yeah, three years. Yeah. At the beginning? I, uh, no, well, well, one year before. Okay. Yeah, um, in May of 2013 is when we started working together. Okay. Um, and she made the Moscow team that year, the right. championship team that year, and we continued to work. And uh, the 2014 was a phenomenal season. She won U.S. Indoor, she won U.S. Outdoor, jumped two meters. And then we had, you know, then we had the... Yeah, press the conference for the high jump the coming up. Um, press conference for less than five minutes very hard. for high jump. The last two years has been very, very hard. The thing is, we've kept walking straight. We've grown. We've learned from it. And here we are. Notice a change in here. Or notice a change in here. Oh, absolutely. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, well, just growth and understanding. Um, you know, I mean, you go through a situation that, that you know, you're. When something's taken away from you, what you love, you know, and I know that this may sound cliche, but when something's taken away from you, what you love, you can either stand up and you can learn from it, or, you know, you can let it bring you down, and maybe, you know, maybe you just end up spiraling, you know, away yeah. from the sport, I guess, but that's not, that's not what happened to us, and we, we kept walking straight, and, um, we got the job done, so that's, that's all. I you said she didn't want to travel? You no, know, well, it was a deal. We didn't want to be traveling, you know, getting on airplanes and traveling to go to meets and this and that. Press and, conference and so, coming you know, up tonight, Joe. She slept in her own bed every single night. That's a good thing. We had one meet in Vancouver several weeks ago. And that's the only meet that we've traveled to this year. Okay. Um, it's just a deal of, look, we have the Olympic trials coming up. Let's just, let's be rested. Let's train. That's the thing, because when you're traveling and you're in airports and you're on the airplane and you're sleeping in hotels and this and that, the quality of training suffers. So for us, it was a deal. Let's have the most quality training that we can possibly have leading up into the trial. And, and we did that. And, uh, she had a cocaine positive for two years. Ago. So just, you know, it was, it was a long suspension. When did, when did it lift? But it was what it was. Uh, April 26th. Of this year? Yeah. So even if she wanted to get the standard, she yeah. couldn't have done anything oh, until we, April. No. That's exactly right. Until okay. April 26th. That was the day that we were eligible to compete. And um, you know, so we, we geared the training to that. Uh, how far did you map this out? Like, how far uh, did you? Like, once that's she got a great question. I mean, really, in reality, it's been... Really, there's been mapping out going on for the last two years. I mean, ever since ever since we learned of it and we learned what it was going to be, there were ways that we approached the training that you know were not necessarily you know super serious, mm -hmm. but it was a deal where we were maintaining. Hey, if we can continue to get a little bit stronger, continue to get better, continue to grow, continue to learn from the situation, um, and that's what we did. Um, we have been training pretty much five to six days a week since October, um, and this is probably the most consistent training maybe that she's ever had in her life, and, uh, which is a testament to her and a testament to her growth. Was it just talent before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I think I, me personally, and I, I, I think that she's the most gifted jumper on the planet. Well, obviously, she's not real tall, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, she's a very, very, very gifted jumper. She's the shortest woman that has ever jumped two meters. 
of every woman that's ever jumped on the planet, she is the shortest one to ever jump out. So she's kind of the spud web or, you know, in Muxy track and field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In track and field, there was a guy named Franklin Jacobs back in the late 70s and 80s. Um, I think he jumped 7'7", seven, seven, and he was about 5'9". Um, so she, in a way, she's kind of that of, of, of women's high jumping. What does she do to overcome that? 